cornering is the most common word among all bikers and uh, riding groups, uh, gathering. So what is it more about and how did I overcome my fears that I have in corner last time? So in this video, I'm going to share more on that. Let's get to it. I'm Barry Sia and welcome to Motographer channel. So today is more of a, more of a sharing, a sharing session of what I face when I deal with corners. So I can just have a slight brief that I actually have fear of corners ever since I got my 2B license. Yes, I went, so I went to, uh, went for course, went to understand what is the actual problem. Okay, I tried uh, different type of bikes. Some bikes I feel, wow, it's very easy to corner. Some bikes I feel, it is, it is like I'm struggling. And then when it comes to the corner, I was like, I can be at loss. So if you face such things and you're seeing this video, I just want to let you know you're not alone. There are people who are, who are not familiar with their bike, there are people who are not familiar with controls, that's why your corner will be a bit unstable. So what I can tell you is that that is a temporary thing. If you still have fear of cornering and you feel unstable, never mind. Take your time because it will be over soon. As long as you keep riding, you keep practicing and at least have the basic fundamentals in your mind while you are riding. So with the right mindset, then you won't have this issue. So I compiled up to five tips after some research and I hope these five tips will be able to handle your fear and able to calm you down and will be able to handle corners much more confidently. So this, basically these are the tips that is more, more based on Singapore riding. Okay, it is, you cannot compare to other countries type. They have long roads. Our roads are tight. Uh, we have more vehicles on the road and yes, there are some black sheep, there are some people who are not focused on the road and we have to protect ourselves at all times. So these tips are actually just a guideline. Okay, I'm not a corner expert. I'm still learning. We are all still learning. Every day I write, I always learn something new. So let's get to the tips. For tip number one, it is something very basic. I'm sure you heard it before. Is to be alert, stay alert. Okay, have enough rest. Okay, if you are not, uh, if you don't have enough rest and you are tired, then don't write. You know, you can take public transport. Make sure that you get, uh, you drink enough water. Make sure that, um, okay, you can splash your face a bit, drink coffee, but make sure that you are alert, okay? Because there are cases, recently my friend, well, he was too tired and he dropped his bike. So um, this thing happened. Or sometimes when you're riding, you're riding very slow speed and you just topple, you know? That, is, that happens when you have a lot of fatigue. So my, this tip number one is very important uh, for not only for cornering, actually it's for riding your motorcycle, okay, or driving a car. It does not mean it only stays on, it only stays on bike. This one also driving a car. If you are fatigued, you will just like doze off and then your steering wheel will just go elsewhere or what. So uh, that's the first tip, okay, be awake and be alert. Tip number two, look far where you're going. Okay, this is, I think you, you also saw, you also learned this during your, when you're actually in the training school. But I also want to add one more tip is that make sure that when you are actually riding and if let's say the whole traffic is slowing down, you look far, have your fingers stand by on the brakes. Let's say from far, when I say see far, that means like um, you see at the traffic light area, you see when you are actually riding behind a car, you see the car in front of this car. It means that you don't, you don't see the car in front of you because it is, a, it is a cycle, it's a kind of like chain reaction. When the front vehicle brake, the the vehicle in front of you surely break. But if you focus on the front vehicle, you will tend to abruptly break. You tend to do hard braking. But if you know that, oh, the front is slowing down already, you know, then, okay, you are already prepared already. And usually because in Singapore roads, you know, there are cases of sudden braking by vehicles around you. When you look far, you actually can see the whole picture. But at the same time, you are able to handle your brakes anytime. So let's say, okay, the front vehicle in front of the car that is in front of you, Okay, suddenly jam brake. You know that, okay, I'm prepared to jam brake because the car in front of you surely have to brake. But if he crash, then at least you, you don't rear end him. But when this happens, when this such scenario happens, right, with your braking and you being standby, what I do is that, other than I look far, I also scan around and I also see my side mirror. Because when you brake, I, will, I usually will do everything at the same time, okay? So when you actually brake, um, I will just have a quick, look at my side mirror to see about whether the rear is coming too fast. If too fast, I will straight away try to swerve out. Okay, of course, it happened very fast. 
looking far also helps in initiating a corner. So when I'm riding, I will look at the corner bend. So when I'm looking at the corner bend, I'm able to understand the, the, the curve and understand how much speed I have to go in. So if it's far, you are actually preparing for that, that bend. Then after that, once you're going to reach that bend, you will see another part, which is the exit. So it is just a smooth thing and the bike will go where you see. So if you keep on looking at the corner and at the outside of the corner, which is the barrier, you might end up there or you might end up being white. Then it become a, it won't be a bend, it won't be a corner, it will be a 90 degree corner. And that's even more sharp and that's even more abrupt. That is much more risky and also it feels more unstable. Okay, so looking far is one of the very important tips. And the third tip is putting your right foot at the pack. Okay, um, because the right foot is where our rear brake is. And last time I faced this before. I'm not sure whether um, you whether you all still will face this, but basically when we are wearing riding boots or we are wearing a bit of heavier boots, a bit of those type of like Timberland type, huh? When we actually right turn, sometimes our foot will accidentally tap on the rear brake. If you are controlling, you purposely actually brake, you know, try to actually do weight transfer, it's fine. But if not, you might actually brake and then lock your rear wheel while in the corner. So depending on your speed, so you might just slide out. So what I did, right, last time I had this problem with my Honda Phantom. Um, what happened was I was wearing riding boots and when I actually do a right corner, right bend, I actually tap. So it kind of like fish still a bit, you know, it kind of shocked me a bit. So, so I, I make it a point now, uh, when every time there's a bend or what, I will just shift um, the front, my front of the foot to my pack. That's all. So when I turn and corner, I just concentrate, look far, concentrate on the bend and just go. But I don't need to worry that I will actually skip from the rear. So um, that, is the, that is one of the tips that I actually use. And I find that it's very useful, so I don't need to worry about all oh, my rear wheel being locked. But when it comes to taking your classes, when you are taking from 2B to 2A, um, or 2A to class 2, I won't recommend that. You just stick to per normal. Anyway, you won't be bending so much. Yeah, but you just stick per normal. Only when you are outside, I find that this will actually help you to prevent your rear from skidding. And tip number four, break earlier before uh, entering a corner or maybe entering a car park. When you brake early, you are able to prepare yourself. When you brake early, you brake to a speed that you are comfortable with. Okay, you are comfortable with. And then when you enter the corner, you stick to that. You can stick to that comfortable speed. But when you enter a corner, because when you brake and we are not in high speeds anyway, the speed will dramatically actually slow down when you are going to mid corner. Okay, because there is a vehicle, so this thing you have to be slow. By the mid corner, that's where my problem comes in, okay? Which is actually tip number five, keep the constant speed, keep a neutral throttle. You just need to actually maintain your speed. No need to really whack. At the corner, don't whack because it will skid your rear, okay? And don't break too much because you will lose a lot of speed. When you lose a lot of speed, let's say you're moving, okay? Uh, and then you lose a lot of speed. It will just, your, your bike will feel like toppling because it's unstable. There is no, there's no speed to let to go with the flow. So that is what will happen if you actually cut your speed too much at mid corner. And, and that's my problem. That was my core problem all the time. So you just maintain and then look far, according to my previous tip, look far and then just go with it and just concentrate. But do, just maintain your throttle. I'm sure that is, um, I think it's a pile, figure of eight. You also have to maintain throttle, something like this. Okay, so just a little more, a little short tip on that is that how do you actually maintain throttle them? You can maintain well if you don't grip too hard. One of my instructors, I had problem with uh, figure of eight anyway. So the, uh, last time I really have a lot of problem and I was training with a uh, super four rebel. So I, I don't know why I cannot maintain. In the figure of eight, it's like my throttle is everywhere. So my instructor actually brought me to a side and then was telling me, okay, now you try to rev up slowly. Then after that, I'm still inconsistent. You can hear on the rev. Then he tell me, lighten my grip. When he said lighten the grip, it means just, you know, you just release the grip a little more. You're not, not, not totally release, like, you know, not, not, not like, okay, I just use my palm to control. Release a bit more. Then you'll find that you actually have more leeway. Then you will find you can actually maintain shorter. Okay, so for the fifth tip will be stay in consistent speed when you're in the bend. Okay, when you're in the bend. And remember when you look far, okay, you will automatically lean. You do not need to, okay, I'm going to lean like MotoGP. You are not preparing for the lean, you're preparing for the exit. 
So you just look and then you will automatically lean in a way. Like what I said, this is, um, this is not for high speed cornering. High speed cornering is a totally different genre altogether. But this is much more of preparing yourself and going through the corner smoothly. And here are my tips for uh, my corner tips that I hope that this video is useful. And yeah, if you are one of those riders who feel that I am, uh, I suck at corner, I do not have, um, I do not have uh, friends that want to ride with me. Honestly, I have friends who saw my corner problem. They are still riding with me. They are really awesome friends. So maybe you have not met your awesome friends yet. So um, after I improve, we all still ride together, you know. But of course, due to the current pandemic, there is still quite a lot of restriction. There is very hard for us to gather, but you get what I mean. So don't worry about uh, too much about your problem and actually find out what is the core. What is the core thing that you need to improve? If you find that uh, my throttle control is not good, then lighten your grip a bit. Okay, lighten your grip a bit. If you find that, oh, my bending, my bending is uh, very unstable. So your bending unstable, can, there will be two things. One, it will be more of um, your visual. It means where you're seeing. Maybe you're looking down. When you're looking down, it's much more faster. It, it feels much more faster. That will create fear because it's our sense, our sense in our human body. Or it's either you're too slow a speed. So when you're too slow speed, how you maintain without just like rushing, without like having a jerk. That means you need to play a bit with your clutch. That one is much more of familiarizing your bike because every bike works differently. So don't worry about being mocked at if there are people who mock at you, make fun of you. Well, I don't think these are really your friends. Okay, real friends, they will be there to support you. They will just tell you, oh, you know, you can just go for it. They will give you encouragement. Okay, they won't give you destructive comments. So those are the friends that you should have. Okay, and gladly, I'm lucky that I have a lot of seasoned riders and uh, even trackers, those who went Sepang. They actually explain to me a bit much more in depth. And I'm still learning. I'm still understanding more how I can improve even further. So these tips, right, I hope that it really helped you. And I, if you find this useful, please share and subscribe to my channel. And I'm doing my best to give you the best content for you guys. And thank you for all your support for all this while wow for Motographer channel. And I will actually work hard to actually come up with more contents like this for you guys. And I'll see you in my next video.